Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the sickest tournament of the year! The sickest prize pool tournament that you're gonna see probably ever. I'm your host, the illest man of all, the Crank Machine! If you hear me go silent a lot, it's probably because I'm coughing and dying. But that's okay! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Skullgrass Be Great! This is the audio test we will be starting soon! 
Please let me know if any of the commentators this week are a little too loud or a little too quiet. We want all of us to be about equally as loud, and the game should be just barely audible. If there are any recommendations that you would like to provide, please, please feel free to do so. We want the stream to be just perfect for you. Hey there, Hydra. Good to see you here. Saw you a few times in a quick match earlier today. You're doing good. You at that grind? I appreciate that. Working hard. Working hard gets results. No results are going to be as amazing as the results we're going to see today. We got an incredible lineup. Out of our out of the world lineup. We got Hero Pond, Cloud King, Gelato, Swift Fox. This is basically combo breaker. Hey Undying, how you doing? Hey there, Facade. You've had not had any preparations. That's totally okay. Hey there, variant. The recommendations. Make the tourney stacked for us again. Hell yeah. No, this time we're actually putting in seeding points. It's gonna take me a hot minute to get everything started. So I'm gonna go quiet. Um, if you guys have not checked in yet, please check in. If you guys are participating today, please, please, please join the group chat. I provided links for all of the things not too long ago. I'm gonna do it again. Do the things, join the things, be ready. I will be back once seating is done. So sit tight, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, feel free to hop into the lobby, the lobby that is currently on stream. And the reason I say that is because we want people playing matches so people can tell me if there are any audio issues. We want to make sure the game audio is not drowning anybody out, which does happen from time to time. We gotta be extra careful. Thank you very much.
Alright, please don't ready up if you guys get this message in time, otherwise we'll watch one more match and that sucks, and that's alright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Skullgirls B-Great, we are starting now, the final seating is done, if you would wish, if you, eh, if you wish to refresh the challenge page, please feel free to do so, it will show you the finalized bracket of the evening! 
all seeding points have been gone or have gone into consideration and uh, they have been ranked appropriately. Thank you for participating in the previous weeks. Now comes the prize pool tournament right after this random match. Let me know if the audio levels are a little bit weird. The game is a little too quiet. We want to make sure that the game does not drown me out. I've noticed that the game does tend to drown me out, especially with the hit sound effects. Trying not to let it get too loud or too quiet. I was typing earlier to ask if anyone was able to get in touch with Cloud. It seems like Cloud will not be available for this evening. Um, I've been asking people to at him, but I don't think anyone's been able to get in touch with him, so whatever. Ah, well. I didn't add hit him. Yeah. Guessing no dice. Congratulations to Sai Noon, you've won absolutely nothing. But you may win something fantastic. Go ahead and exit out. We're gonna go ahead and begin the tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Skull Goes Be Great. Uh, exclamation mark bracket will bring you the GG8 challenge page that will show you the recent most recent tournament, which is of course Skull Girls Be Great number 91! Most important tournament of the evening, the only tournament of the evening, I hope. I hope I'm not overlapping with somebody else, that would suck. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Skullgirls Be Great. How many times have I welcomed you here? Three? Three is the magic number. You, Tame, there's a, there's a C in there. There's a, there's a C in bracket, that's okay. Alright. <clears throat> Everyone sit tight. Because the first match of the evening is the only match in round one. Is Undying versus Hydra. Undying versus Hydra will be the only stream match of round one. As a reminder, we are standard Skull Girls tournament rules. Best three out of five. Double elimination. Uh, you can only change character order on a win, not assist or anything else. On a loss, you can change whatever the heck you want. Everyone in round two, please sit tight. Two sets from every single round will be on stream from winner side until losers round four. Losers round four. Onward, everything will be on stream. Because we cannot properly determine which sets in round two we want on stream, please, please, please sit tight. Do not play any of your sets in round two. Right now, we're just going to focus on round one, Undying versus Hydra. Hydra is already ready to go. What the heck is Undying? Undying! I mean, you're here. You checked in, didn't you? Well, they go ahead and get ready. You want to join? Nice. Undying versus Hydra. Since this is the prize pool tournament, this means that you guys can go ahead and bid. Everyone has money. I think you type exclamation mark points. That tells you how much monies you have. Yeah, that's fun. And then um, to bet, you type exclamation mark bet, a number, and then an option. And by option, it's either Undying or Hydra. I'm gonna go ahead and make it rain so everyone has a little bit more money. Not that it's really necessary, but why not? I can go ahead and find that command. Make it rain. Solid blocks. Using the shadow to keep on applying the pressure, a little bit of a frame trap there. Could have matched out of it, but Fortune chose to be patient and actually got hit because of it, but there was no clean conversion, unfortunately. Hydra was not ready to convert off of that. Oh, that nice clean hit, though, from Undying. DP into an airstring and then keep him in the corner. 
does the side switch from the corner, pulls him out, and then goes for the instant overhead cross-up, but did not work out. The blocks on this dude! Hydra with the money blocks! Fireball! Parasol coming in with a tear shot, trying to apply a little bit of pressure. Light tear shot, in fact, the meatiest of fireballs. Oh, using double jump to try and uh, auto-correct the direction of the normal for those of you guys who do not know. During your second jump, you will automatically auto-correct your first normal, whereas your normal jump, you would not. Super jump has the exact same effect. This can lead to all sorts of interesting setups, as demonstrated by Undying right there. Of course, not able to get a clean hit to confirm. Two Fuqua's that look exactly the same. I don't actually even know which one's applying the pressure. It was actually Hydra's, but then Hydra's gave up the ball. It was Undying's Fuqua's turn. Was not blocking a counter hit and then took the damage needed to die. Undying picks up back on that Fuqua. Red Burst because Parasol tends to do infinite burst baits. Undying had the fear, was afraid to burst at any moment, didn't want to risk giving Hydra the, uh, what's it called? Heavy counter hit damage bonus. Calling in DP to space out in case Parasol chose to approach. Unfortunately, Parasol was going away, so instead, for, uh, the Fortune DP assist just got hit. Stuffed. Took a little bit of damage. Wasn't, of course, a counter call because Hydra's assist is dead. Man, interesting spacing coming out of Undying. Going forward in the air and then dashing backwards. Not Fugua. Philia. I kept calling it a Phil uh, Fugua because it looks exactly the same. Wow. Oh, Cloud's here. Ah. That's... We would have to start the bracket over. Okay. I'm gonna ask Undying and Hydra after this match to see how they feel about this. We, I would be willing to reset the bracket if they are. Alright, we are confirmed resetting the bracket. Give me a hot minute. Okay, guys, I'm totally fine. 100% healthy. <clears throat> so, 
So the reason it is is because we do points-based seeding first, right? And everyone else gets seeded after that. So the reason they're for <laughs> fighting first round is because both of them have zero points going in, and they are like seed seeds one or for first, second, and third seed uh, are all based on points. So it's just kind of by pure chance they end up fighting each other. It's kind of shitty, but that's how it works. Like you, Gelato, I would seed you below both of them. But unfortunately, I can't do that because you were playing in the previous three tournaments and you scored higher than that. So I'm giving you the edge by not seeding you below them. Does that make sense, Gelato? Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> Hydra, Undying, you guys are both watching the stream. Would you guys want to restart your set as entirely, or do you want to count that last match? <clears throat> it's up to you. Screw it, we're restarting. Just get in here. It's all up to Undying. Okay. Undying can choose. Nonetheless, both of you, get in here. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and resend all the links to everybody. Reminder, if you are participating today, please, please, please join our Steam group chat. I have provided the link. Stay in the chat. Reminder that this is a double elimination tournament. Until you are completely eliminated from the tournament, please, please, please stay in the group chat. This is how your opponent will try and find you. This is how I will try and find you when it is your turn to be on stream. Reminder that two sets from winner's side will be on stream all the way up until loser's round four, where all sets will be on stream. Undying says, let's not count it. All right, sounds fair to me. So we're going to start the first round of Skullgirls B Great number 91 prize pool tournament of April 2019. Sinun versus Undying and then Hydra versus Variant. I fucked up. It's not actually Hydra versus Undying. I fucked up royally. Hey there, uh, hey there Dash. How's it, how's it going? This is this is horrible. This is all horrible. Why do I do this? My existence is sloppy. You know, I think this happened once before and I promised myself I would never reset a bracket. So much for that. Bracket's way better this way anyway. <clears throat> Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Skullgirls B-Grade Take 3. 
Yeah. Bracket's been reset. We're starting over. None of that happened. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bet. Close. Hydra? That work? Yeah, cool. Alright, whatever. That's fine. Everyone, please refresh your challenge page. And don't make the same mistake I did. So you guys are aware of the first round. Of the first round, we have two sets going in. Gonna go ahead and get Sinun versus Undying first. Oh, it's not letting me join the Steam chat. Hydra, why do you love this tournament? Why do you put up with this shit? <laughs> Round 1, Sinon versus Undying. Same ol', same ol'. <clears throat> I'm nothing- I'm not taking anything away from the players. Same ol', same ol' as in like, reminder that winners can only switch team order, not assists or anything else. Losers can switch whatever they want. Standard 3 out of 5, double elimination tournament. Standard Skullgirls rules, the only thing that's banned is Timer Scam Tech, which is an example of has been provided on the uh, Steam Group page. You can find a video made by Liam explaining a glitch in the Skullgirls system that allows you to infinitely time out the game. That is not allowed. Everything else is. Everything else goes! Cat Scratch Fever isn't taking advantage of the hit stop, reversing out of there. DP to stuff the assist call, using head roll to... Uh, use the iframes to get through whatever double might have thrown out and just kind of get the punish on her. Wasn't really much of a punish. I don't think she really pressed anything. It just, just kind of mixed her. Quote unquote mixed. Elgato coming in, getting that counter hit, knocking her down from the skies. Stuffs the approach from Undying during the incoming. Uh, so, okay, incoming setup. Ah, oh, what a hit confirmed. Let's go. Sinun's Soul of Fortune is gonna, gonna need a lot of work done on her before this is gonna work. Uh, but that counter hit is gonna help! Counter hit's gonna do glorious work! Sinun's sitting on 5 meters, she can reverse a lot of anything, and Undying was unfortunately not prepared. That is okay, that happens. Sinun did have a huge lead at first, I would not count Undying out just yet. Just their fortune was able to do about half of Sinun's fortune's life. That is extremely well done. It's like so unprofessionally professional. <laughs> the idea is not to never fall, the idea is to fall gracefully. I have to cheer for the duo fortune. Ye. There is no duo fortune. Oh, you mean fortune mirror. Probably. I'm assuming that's what you meant. Oh yeah. Speaking of uh, unprofessionally professional, who's gonna win? Undying or... <coughs> Holy shit. <clears throat> what am I doing with my life? Undying getting the first hit, playing 
puts the head off, juggling the opponent around, unfortunately pressing the- or losing the input on one button, Kara cancelling into the air super- what is it? Not cast quite true. And it's been so long since I've heard that super's name. There we go, very ledge. Thanks, Fortune. Nice counter hit coming down there. It's gonna do some glorious damage on Sinun's fortune. Sinun gets out, mashes level three to try and get out. Went for a low to punish. No! Standing hard would have been a glorious punish. He would have gotten the heavy counter hit damage. It would have been perfect. Fortune is plenty fast enough. It didn't matter though, of course. Undying was able to get the nice clean hit that they needed eventually. Able to punish that mash level three. Get out of there. One game apiece. Like I said before, neck and neck. You never know how this set is gonna go. Undying and Sainu, of course, are both players that have been leveling up their game. Playing Headless Fortune, one of the more difficult concepts to uh, really get a hold of in this game, but it seems like these players are doing it just fine. Juggling around with the head, applying amazing pressure, using the head to make it safe without an assist. This is some old school matchup. You know? Like, used to see solo fortune as like the only viable for solo, quote unquote, because the head was basically an assist. So interesting. <laughs> Trading five frame jabs, both getting counter hit. Nice, good one for a red burst bait right there. I don't think it was really much of a burst bait because you would have had to block that, and that would have meant that they were. Gonna be zero, but that's okay. Good old headless combos in the corner. Get a little bit of that extra Elgato damage in. Addition combo with Cat Scratch Fever. Maximum use of Undizzy, teching there right at the end, letting the Undizzy dry out a little bit faster. Not that it matters. Helping them get their position a little bit quicker. As in 1v1, you can reposition between taking a kill. You do have to kill your opponent twice. The only matchup that behaves this way. Oh, interesting. Popping them up just so they can land cancel, get them, set them up for a counter hit, is to try to do a meaty low while you jump above them. Excellent setup by Undying. Was able to get glorious amounts of damage onto Sinun's fortune because of that. Sinun, of course, is sitting on 5 meter, though. And that's what happens when you sit on 5 meter. Not 5 meter, 3 meter. That's what Sinun should have been doing. Undying did it first. Got the kill. Lots of damage. Undying is on match point, just needs one more game, one more win. Take this set off of Sinun, knocking Sinun into losers. I wouldn't count Sinun just out just yet. They've been playing pretty well. Everyone set to go? What happens if you fifth a dismember or fifth a dismember? Uh, it's weird iframe interaction. Um, and also depends on where the head is, because the fifth a dismember goes towards where the head is. So it, it's kind of tricky and hard to tell. In general, if the heads are close enough to each other, the second one wins. And the iframes lets you invuln through the first one. A tenth of dismember. Twenty-fifth of dismember. It's meter for everybody! All the good children get meter. DHC into uh, Philia level 3 for that glorious amount of damage. Take advantage of Sinun's solo character, not able to really do anything to get out of there. That's not what I meant to say at all. I just kind of autopiloted in my commentary. That is like literally not what I meant to say at all. Ah, he's getting that cross-up instant overhead. Of course, they yeah, were already in the air, so it's not really much of an instant overhead. It was technically Fortune's turn. Fortune on the whiff, got a clean punish from Undying. It is the instant overhead setup. Alright, going forward, let's aim for less spaghetti. 
Undying takes this set. Sinun, do not feel discouraged. You are have been knocked into loser's bracket, but loser's bracket can make an incredible comeback. Loser's bracket is going to be challenging. We got quite the turnout today. Nonetheless, I believe in you. So stay calm. Stay focused. Going to be doing great. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and report that score to 3-1. All right, um, next up is going to be Variant versus Hydra. Go ahead and get into this lobby. See how that goes. Die and get out of here. What'd you get disqualified for? Did you, like, change teams on win? I wasn't paying attention. Oh. Does your opponent want you... Does the opponent want exactly set? Or want a reset? Not a reset. <clears throat> a rematch for that one match. <coughs> I'm on a fever dream right now, so I, I cannot focus. He changed teams on a win? Okay. So, I want you, Undying, reach out to your opponent, and, um... Did I say he? My mistake. Undying, reach out to your opponent, um, and ask them if they want to re uh, set or redo that one match. It was 2-1 in that case. And then uh, tell me the new score if you do that. I'm good on dying. Give me, give me feedback. If you accidentally change teams on a win, it does not disqualify you. It technically forfeits that one match. So ask your opponent if they want to re like keep on playing bla uh, the bleh, the set at two two, and then you can go ahead and report me the new score. If they don't care, then just we'll report it as a three one and call it a win on your end. Thank you. This time with the fireball, throwing out the tier shot to try to apply a little bit of pressure. Anti-air tier, trying to stuff, reading on that jump. Nice, using para the parasol's parasol. Do a glide in, close a little bit of space, trying not to give Fuqua a little bit too much com zone to be comfortable. Much of a zone to be comfortable, whatever. Makes sense to somebody. Frame trapping, despite that push block, the slide of course does come in and keep on applying pressure. The correct fireball super to anti-air pain wheel. Trying to fly and build all, all that height. Not working out. Now it's becoming more and more dangerous for Fuqua to keep on jumping. All this jumpy behavior is going to give Painwheel more and more height to control. More and more screen to control with the increased height, I'd say. Those guys who do not know, uh, if the second player jumps, it increases the vertical height of the screen, which gives Painwheel more space to fly upward. If the opponent does not jump, and Painwheel's vertical height is actually limited. It's significantly more limited, I guess, is the accurate way to work. Going for that Cruel Lily. Apply a little bit of pressure, fly cancel out of it before your opponent could PBG see it. Good call, good call. Your shot to apply pressure. Try to catch a, a very or jump or that. Eh, try to catch a jump very early with an air grab. Not working out. <clears throat> Went in with the jumping hard, got the hit confirmed, but no clean conversion. That's unfortunate. That flight cancel looked fine. Ooh, flight canceling a little bit too early. I think you wanted a button to come out there. Not flight canceling, land canceling a little too early. Just barely too low to the ground. Didn't matter, Variant was able to get a hit confirmed. Cleaned up soon after. A lot of spaghetti there at the end. No clean conversions. A lot of stray hits. It's okay. Shaking off the rust. Cracking the fingers. Getting ready! Or would you say a real robot, it's... a very little spaghetti? Eh? Eh? Alright. Uh... That... 
close. I'm dying? Question mark. I mean, technically, we they're playing the last match or something, so I don't actually know. But Hydra versus. <clears throat> Whoever wants to bid, go at it. Nice. Stuffing the uh, jumps very early with the counter hit. Hydra throwing out the preemptive fireballs, expecting to not get counter hit in the air. No clean conversions coming from Variant, even though they are counter hitting uh, Fuqua out of the air. You're going through. Nice use of detonate to keep on applying pressure. <clears throat> Sniper for a little bit of extra damage. Definitely not enough to kill there. If they DHC, they definitely would have unskilled and probably done enough to kill, but unfortunately that was not the case. <clears throat> Good tier pressure. The burst beats for days coming from Parasol. Classic Parasol pressure. Pretty much in the corner, it's like so scary to burst at any point. Just kind of, kind of waste, uh, kind of gotta wait for that gold burst bait. That was poetry. Sniper to get the crumple. Set up Oki. Unfortunately, was not able to close the gap enough. Suck about three quarters of a screen apart. Oh, try to use the tear toss to delay the descent. Was not enough. Still got hit by the ends of the, the level three, the top ends. Top line? I don't know. You describe it. To be top. Try to dash it, go for a sneaky overhead. Uh, try to catch their opponent blocking, but unfortunately for them, Variant was ready. Not Variant. Hydra was ready and like trying to uh, dash back and space it out. Hydra still got hit eventually. Lost the parasol. Now we're on this Fuqua that's about to die. Got a clean hit from Variant and nice conversion. That wraps it up. Variant's going on with two wins on match point against Hydra. Not looking too good. I just got any secret tech he's wait saving up. Now's the time to whip it out. Keeping that winner side advantage is really, really important. And swing how oh, the tournament goes at the very end. Wolf Fox King himself. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. <laughs> Round star fireball, nothing to go off of that. Just just kind of a fireball for no reason. Get the assistant that was trying to make the pressure safe. Um, was able to get damage on both the characters, not able to carry to the corner and get a double snap. Kind of unfortunate, that's okay. Bit of tier pressure, went for a random anti here there. I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to do in that situation, but that's okay. Maybe tried to low profile the tier, did not work out. Trying to approach with a jumping hard kick, ended up having to use a low, light shadow, got the nice spacing there, to convert with the jumping hard kick very cleanly, went for an overhead reset, because we are running out of Undizzy, went for a very slow reset to drain that Undizzy meter as fast as possible, for those of you guys who don't know, you have to wait not only 6 frames before the Unmeter starts to drain, or the Undizzy, Unmeter? The Undizzy meter starts to drain, but you also have to wait for however long it takes for that all that Undizzy to go down as much as it did. So Hydro is going for really risky resets there, plenty of time for Varian to escape, but in fact, Varian did not escape. Those got out at a different point in the pressure. And now is applying pressure of their own. Fight guy to the corner. Carry it all the way. Oh, went for the green burst bait right there. Ran out of Undizzy and did not believe that it was a good time to press buttons. Expecting maybe a grab reset to come out or something of the sort. Went to tech and caused the burst. That punish cost Hydra that character, and Hydra's now left with this single Parasol. This Parasol's getting mixed! Oh no! Probably baited out a pillar with an unmatchable reset! That heavy counter hit damage did a lot of work! Sniper getting that crumple! Not gonna play Oki, actually just uses that as an opportunity to raw tag. Gets hit by the level 3, unfortunately. Hi uh, Variant was not ready to react to the level 3. But Variant was ready to weave in through any sort of zoning the Parasol could throw out. Get in a clean hit, convert nicely, and take their third win. Variant will be moving forward from winner's side. Hydra was eliminated to the loser's bracket, but fear not. This is, of course, a double elimination tournament. That means that, Hydra, you still stand a chance. Clear your mind. Take a deep breath. Oh, things are yet to be done. I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't think of a dramatic phrase there. What, what should I have said there? I don't actually know. 
Nonetheless, Variant will be moving on to winner's side. We now have a completed... Or completed? Completely ready round two. We're gonna obviously get Swift Fox Dash versus Cloud King on stream, because that'd be stupid not to get on stream. Followed by... I actually want to see Softy versus Facade. Now, Softy's kind of become like a, a crowd favorite recently. The Softy's been improving at a horrifyingly quick rate, and it's really cool to see. Two tournaments ago, they were, of course, the only player that was able to make Rabble Flaggers switch to their main team, which is impressive, definitely, to say the least. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, blocks number three and then four on stream. So next up on stream will, of course, be Swift, bleh, Swift Fox Dash and Cloud King themselves. That means Gelato, Undying, Customer Service Hero Pond, and Variant will be playing off stream. And once you are filling up the gaps in the losers round one bracket, please, please, please make sure that you guys are playing your losers matches. I know there are some really good matches on stream that you really want to see, but we often run into the situation where losers bracket is being held up and we don't want to risk that. So make sure as soon as you have your opponent in losers, reach out to them using the Steam group chat. If not, at me and I will try to reach out to them. Otherwise, of course, you'll get the buy. But we need to make sure those matches keep on going. Stay on the road. That makes sense. I don't know. Oh, that's right. We need a new stream lobby. That is, of course, correct. Go ahead and get that lobby address. Cloud. No. Cloud. No. There's a podcast? What podcast? The fact that Softy didn't shout out themselves in their podcast is crap. Was that the podcast with Fenster? I heard rumors about that. Uh, that close. Very. So who do you guys think is going to win? This is basically literally a grand finals of any major. Dash versus Cloud. This is a big deal bet. Not going to lie. This is a, a question of the century. Who do you think would win out these two? Oh, wow. The fuck Dash has actually never used a Steam join link. Didn't know that. What should we do when we inevitably be DC? Uh, redo, you either redo the match or technically the person with the health lead. If, that, if there's an obvious health lead, like a whole character lead, then um, we give that match technically... Actually, there's literally no way to tell who's the one that lagged out. The match goes to the person with more health, which kind of sucks. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me, we actually made rules for this. I lied. It's you redo the match, and if you lag out again, then the match goes to the person with more health. So in the worst case scenario, you guys end up playing 10 games instead of 5 if you guys keep on lagging out. Which would be hilarious, but also I hope that doesn't happen. Does that seem fair? That was a rule we have been using and I totally forgot it because we haven't had any laggy players in a hot minute. Basad, you are not just a nobody. You just haven't played in a minute. You've been going off on Eunice, I think. Basad, you are my boy. I expect great things from you. Speak for myself, Crank? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what that means. You want to see 10 games? <laughs> okay. Did anybody bet? Wow, nobody bet on Cloud versus Dash. That's crazy. No one was sure. All right. All right, so Cloud's playing squiggly. I didn't know this was physically possible. Is 
I just assume good players would know not to play Squiggly. That was a joke, ladies and gentlemen. Da -da 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 -da. Unfortunately, I think expecting to the teleport there, Cloud was expecting the 50-50. Oh, the item drop does trade with the SBO. Yeah, that almost never works. It's very unfortunate. I tried that against Dash before. It does not work. Psychopath is also pretty good about dealing with that. Nice, getting that low. Then going for another low, actually. Just raw tagging out. Dash. Squeezing his way between the pressure. Not an unmashable uh, situation. Oh, wow. Actually going for another mashable situation. Car would have not punished that, but it would allowed at least a DHC. Cloud doesn't have much meter. Dash is going off. Kara cancels, but of course, the lower back end of that super does not have a hitbox, which means that Dash is able to weave out. PBGC, the responding Mario Gorilla with a 360, showing off his Bella Prowess. Concho for the reset. Somebody get Mike Z. Someone's stealing his tech. It's been copywritten. Wow, Cloud really intends to run this back. Dash still has that health advantage, but not by much. Also had the Undizzy uh, helping him out, limiting how much work Cloud can actually do on this character, but I don't think Cloud is really worried about that. Especially after that. Getting another clean hit confirm after the Undizzy drained, even though it looked like Dash was just about to weave his way out of the pressure. Wow, picked it up without using OTG. That's crazy. I didn't even know you could do that. I do not know how to play Bella. Wow! I believe this is one of those situations where you say, <clears throat> Not even close, BB. To be fair, that Bella was living on a prayer. Uh, it was a trio Bella against a duo Peacock. And Peacock is, of course, the highest damaging character in the game. Um, one touch away from death, that Bella was. And, uh... You know what? Credit to Crowd. I would not say that was depressing. I would say that was fan-fucking-tastic. I think Cloud demonstrated how incredibly powerful his Bella really is, and it really made a point. It may, can you go back to the main lobby? Each round might actually save you. Woo! Round of applause for Cloud. But Cloud didn't win. Yet. We don't know. Dash is, of course, in the lead with one game. Oh man, we're using OG skins. Let's go. Getting a nice confirm with a uh, jumping medium kick. Very meaty move, very powerful thing. Oh, did not go far enough with DNB before car canceling into SBO, which does of course mean that that SBO did with Bella's arms are an invulnerable um, thing. This is jointed. It's not a hurt box. There we go. Nice block on the raw tag, calling the assist to cover any sort of reversal like that. Seems like Cloud will not be falling for that again. Dash did do that last round. Yeah, jumping hard punch is impossible to weave through there when Airshow George or Item Drop is on stage. It was actually a really smart Item Drop by Dash to like actually beat out that um, jumping HP. A little bit of for too afraid to press buttons because of pellet RNG. I don't blame Cloud there. The right kind of pellet RNG would have weaved right under uh, Cloud's Bella and then actually done actually hit squiggly out of and trying to build any sort of charge, which would have sucked. Heavy bomber into car super. Don't even need the DHC. That gets the kill. Good stuff. Are we gonna stay double in? Yes, we're gonna want the mid-screen vortex. Wow, got in with the jumping heart, but no, not able to convert because it's just the very tip of it. <clears throat> I don't even think Cloud was ready to uh expect that to hit. It's crazy. Wow, Light Bomber there, trying to expect some sort of reversal coming out of Dash. Uh, ended up just getting a clean hit, but not able to really convert. Not really ready for that. Nice bait on the level 3. Their character to space out. Swift Fox Dash. Yeah, Swift Fox unable. Yeah. Let me try that again. Swift Fox Dash is unable to counter call because their Peacock is dead. And now their Bella is dead. We're going in one game apiece.
See what I meant? That last game wasn't disappointing. It really showed off what Cloud is capable of doing, and showed that once Cloud was able to kind of like adjust to how TJ plays, he was able to get a lot of momentum. And that was very telling. It really, really showed in the next game. Um, Swift Fox is six. Bleh. Wow, it's so hard to say his name. Dash is going to have to make a couple of adjustments of himself, uh, himself otherwise it's not going to work out quite the same. Or in, uh, and switch back to his favor. Nice use of sweep to uh, hurt the assist, putting, putting them into a knockdown state and also increasing the amount of time it takes for them to recover. Of course, when an assist is hit, it does increase the recovery period. Factory period, if you want to be lewd. Weaving in between the projectiles, coming in with a jumping light kick after the second jump. That was beautiful, blocking the raw tag too on that reset. Man, Dash, that is not working out for you. You really gotta stop doing that. I would saw it once and was ready, just understood what you were trying to do. No, the George assist! Light George saving the day. What are you trying to do? I think you were trying to DHC into double, and for some reason just didn't work, which kind of actually just really, really sucks. I honestly don't know how that didn't happen. I mean, I expect someone of Clouds of Caliber to know this, but for those of you guys who do not know, SPO has actually a really, really tight DHC window. Like, way tighter than most supers. It's actually quite fascinating. Light Bomber there. There we go. Wow, both of them just perfectly spaced around the Lenny explosion. Trying to approach. Good respecting of that item drop. Did block it, but unfortunately for them, Swift Fox Dash was ready to teleport and uh, get a nice hit confirm on a 50-50 mix-up. Using that, was able to hit both characters, juggle them both to death. Juggle them? Juggling is not like a term in Skullgirls. I don't know why I said that. That's like literally... That's like some scrub quotes quality tier bullshit. Guys, my commentary is in the gutter today. But what isn't in the gutter is Swift Fox Dash's ability to adapt. I thought, man, Dash is going to need to make some major adjustments if he wants to be able to make a comeback and make a statement to Cloud the same way Cloud did to him. And you know what? Dash did not disappoint. Woo, that clean conversion. Got that burst bait, though. Counter hit damage. Let's go. This kills. Or not. That's okay, too. That means Squiggly's going to get about... Of a third of her life back, unless you call her as an assist and then she just dies. That's okay too. Teleport plus lock and load is scary. It's like a Walmart brand uh, flesh step mix up. A setup that Gelato is all too familiar with. <laughs> that was not even playing, I just wanted to throw that out there. I mean, he is playing. To, uh, you know what I mean. Never mind. Nice counter hit there. Careful Cloud, can't weave through the pressure when Dash has got his momentum going like this. He's about to make a real strong statement here. Wow, one on two meter too. That wasn't even set play. Dash was holding back. That's insane. That's Dash's third win. Dash, moving on on winner's side. Knocking Cloud King himself into loser bracket. Congratulations, Dash. You'll be moving forward on winner's side. Cloud, of course, do not fret. There is an entire loser's bracket for you to work through. You shall perform fantastically. I have no doubt. Do not underestimate your opponents. There are some fantastic players participating today. And Dash will not be your only challenge this evening. Next up on stream is, of course, Softy versus Facade. Uh, I see Hereupon versus Varianth has already happened. Gelato versus Undying. Make sure you guys are playing off stream. I'm going to double check the stream chat. You did. Oh, yeah, Gelato re re reported 3 0 against Undying. Never mind. Thank you so much. As a reminder, you guys may report your scores in text to me in the group chat, or you can keep the bracket open and go ahead and report it yourselves. Softy and Facade, please go ahead and join. Facade, of course, an old school player. Not really old school. He like joined a few years ago, but he's like really, really good and then stopped playing for a hot minute, so I call him old school because I used to see him every day and then he just vanished. Softy has been around for a hot minute, but has really escalated how much their performance has improved. That was hard to word. 
I really need to think out my sentences in advance. Link, sure thing, buddy. Cloud King versus Hydra is set up in loses round one. Please, please, please play your match off stream. We are waiting for you. I mean, we're not literally waiting for you, but we will be waiting for you if you guys don't play your sets soon. <clears throat> Hydra, save you from. Oh yeah, <laughs> rest in peace. If I were you, I would just open up OBS and record that set. And then, uh, admire it later. Maybe frame it in, like, one of those moving photo frames. Just, like, leave a set of you being completely demolished by Cloud. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. Hydra, I think you can, I think you can take a game. I believe in you. Cloud is an incredibly experienced player, but I would not, I would not count you out entirely. You can do it. I believe in you. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> really? 1 through 11 was taken? What about 0? Was Wolf Fox King 0 taken? I feel like that would be- that would go before Wolf Fox King. Right? If I was an edgelord on the- on twitch.tv.com, I would want to, uh, take Wolf Fox King 0 right away. That would be the first thing I would try. You didn't think about it. You, sir, are not a computer scientist. Every computer scientist knows that numbers start at zero. <laughs> Dang, Dash. Welcome to my magic realm. Wolf Fox King sounds like a... Like a weird version of chess. I don't know why. Oh, went for an anti-air there! Try and stuff Facade's cross up thing, but it just did not work. It just didn't work. It just did an anti air. I don't know why. Did you just get hit too early? I'm just gonna believe that it just got hit too early, so you were still in startup. That's crazy. Yo! That fireball into the. What's it called? L Shadow. Inversion. It was so cool. It's so basic, but it still makes me so excited. Using L Bomber and just down backing, try and show some respect, then try to apply some pressure a little bit too soon. Facade taking advantage of it means that he's juggling both these characters. God, I said it again. Why do I say juggle? That's like not a thing in Skullgirls. Went in to apply pressure with jumping hard kick. Did not expect the uh, car super to come out. It did come out. And that DHC into hatred install means that. Oh, well, okay. Before I can even finish the sentence, it's now Double's turn again. I mean, Double has plenty of tools that make it always Double's turn. It's always kind of risky. Juggling is interchangeable with comboing. Yeah, but it's like... It's like niche. Juggling is usually associated with games that have like... Uh, what's it called? Laun not Launcher Decay. Like, Gravity Scaling? You know what I mean? Or like, things like Tekken, you'll call it Juggling. I think MVC2 had Gravity Scaling? Like that? You would or maybe it was 3? I don't know. One of them had Gravity Scaling, I think. Don't correct me. I was sore, I was told. Did Street Fighter 3 have gravity scaling? Those kinds of games usually have, like, the term juggling used a lot. I think Accent Core is gravity scaling? A surprisingly large amount of game. Yeah, exactly! Ew! Gravity scaling. Gravity scaling sucks. Why is that a thing? That being said, I still think Accent Core is one of my favorite fighting games, but still. Goddamn. Yeah, Skullgirls is kind of like that too. Skullgirls have three different weights based on the size of the character, they fall at a different rate. Because, you know, that's how gravity works, right? You fall faster if you're heavier. Everyone knows that's how gravity works, right? Facade, of course, taking that first game. I mean, Facade, even though he's been away from Skullgirls, is so just ingrained with, like, Skullgirls tech. He's been grinding for years honestly this guy is super good so softy has quite a tough challenge him, but i still wouldn't count softy out yet again softy played fairly well last round but on top of that it's just 
such a capable and such an adapting player. Softy's done incredible comebacks. No, just a little bit too close for that fireball pressure to work and uh, to get that counter hit off of that uh, reset. Not the reset, the burst bait. That's what I meant. Sod landing, re jumping to get that grab reset right then and there. Carrying all the way to the corner. This is where things get scary. Ed. Wow, you actually lost the DHC. I didn't actually think that would work. Interesting. I wonder how that. Wonder how that um, L or no? H bomber, carrying all double all the way to the corner, keeping double stuck there. Even double guess the size switch. Their vortex is of course crippled by the fact that they are in the corner. Unless they pull their opponent to mid screen, doesn't matter. Facade got the hit confirmed, even though they were trying to. The uh, what's it called? Softy was trying to bait out Facade to the mid screen, and ended up backfiring horribly. Clean conversion off that throw with the drill. Not even have to burn a meter for that. Facade is sitting at five meter. I wonder what he's trying to do. Gonna be spooky. Burnt poison, etc. So he does the double damage. Is Facade that item from Final Fantasy VII? That like, if you're have a status effect, you do double damage, and then you use it like with Tifa in the speed run. Is that what? I, am I thinking of the right thing? SG is great for hundreds and hundreds of reasons. No gravity scaling is just the first of them. Not saying Skullgirls is perfect, but damn, is it good? Seven years old, and I still love it to death. It's a Pokemon move. Oh. What's that item in that's used in Final Fantasy VII speedrunning, where if Tifa, like, purposely, like, gives herself all the status effects in the world, and then she, like, does some move and then kills everything? After you're dropping out? What? That's unorthodox. Do you want to drop just into losers, or do you want to drop, into the drop out of the tournament? It's up to you. I want to ask you or pressure you in any way because I don't want to make you, like, you know, feel uncomfortable by any means. But if you feel like you want to drop out of the tournament, that's totally okay. Just let me know if you want to drop out of the tournament or just drop into losers. It's up to you. I guess they're just gone. Um, I'll knock them into losers for now, in case they come back. But I think I think they're just done. That's okay. It happens. I mean, Softy might have quit for a variety of reasons, but. The least of which is probably not that this game gets under people's skin. Skullgirls is an incredibly emotional game. This has been said by, like, time and time again for years. I think Ken and... This is why Ken and Black stopped playing. Ken and Black said it himself. This game, no, even if you're winning, just has a way of getting to you. Um, I remember he got up from a Grand Finals win, like set, and he won, but he got up shaking, like, just furious out of his mind. This, this game, like, brings the... brings some dirty stuff out of you. Not sticking on the topic too long, we're going to go ahead and move on to winners round 3. Gelato versus Swift Fox Dash, followed by Hero Pond versus Facade. On loser side, Cloud King versus Hydra. Variant versus Sinoon, and Undying versus the winner of Cloud King versus Hydra. Please make sure you're playing your matches as soon as possible. Alright, well, Cloud King just won. So, Undying versus Cloud King and Variant versus Sinoon. Make sure you guys are playing your sets from losers round 2. On stream will, of course, be Gelato versus Dash, followed by Hero Pond versus Facade. Gelato and Dash, if you guys would like to enter the lobby, please feel free to do so. I'm going to go ahead and provide the lobby link. Oh, Cloud Reporting 3.0. My mistake, didn't see it at the time. Oh, wait. That... Okay. 
current. What is the current button? Oh, dash one, that. That, close, dash. All right, bet. We're gonna do a new bet. That's gonna be Gelato versus Dash. Make your bets! This is yet another Grand Finals type of set. This is uh, some, some good shit. Get in there with some good bids. If you wanna. I don't know. Brown start, Dash immediately trying to build space, Gelato immediately trying to take space away, does not want Dash to escape his grasp. This setup has often been described as a horrible nightmare for Parasol until Parasol gets in, and then it's just a field day for Parasol, she just automatically wins. So I can see Gelato's eagerness to get in there as fast as possible, trying to weave in a tear toss here and there, trying to apply a little bit more on the screen to scare Dash into his corner not work out. Jada was slowly chipped and hit away. Uh, well, slowly chipped and lost his health from hits here and there. <coughs> and here Dash is already on meter advantage over his opponent as well. That's crazy to imagine. Oh, gets the stagger. Nice clean hit confirmed. This is going to kill the double. We're going to go ahead and burn the meter. Still got that nice meter advantage. What's the incoming set? We're going to go ahead and get the item drop. Uh, lock and load is blocked, but of course they're forced to stay blocking because the item drop is dropped to keep that frame trap there. Try to punish them for pressing press any sort of super or any sort of, uh, any other try to any other I don't know any other tool that Bella has. Bella has a lot of tools against Fortune or not Fortune. Ah, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me? Bella has a lot of tools against Peacock, um, and that's why Bella had such a significantly easier time getting in against instead of Parasol. In fact, Gelato might be taking notes and might think, hmm, maybe I want to change up the team order for this set, because uh, it's a tough thing to do. You know, it's a, this is a tough set for a Parasol point. Yeah, Dash is a fantastic team. Dash has been playing, like, props to Dash. I think he's been playing this team since, like, 2013 or something? 2014, maybe? Maybe more. I don't know. This guy, he, he's he's been going off with this team forever. <clears throat> All your yens. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Round two. The lot has some serious analysis to do. Because uh, he was planning was not working. He needs to adapt. He needs to adjust. Sticking to Parasol Point! Interesting. Okay, so Delano is very comfortable with his teamwork and does not want to throw off his Feng Shui. Went for a standing light kick, expecting Dash to be extremely aggressive round start instead of trying to give space. I mean, Dash definitely was a lot more aggressive than usual. He actually just stood his ground. He didn't actually go up into the air and try to dash back and try to build space so he can start zoning. Continues to pressure them in the corner with that clean conversion. That's going to kill Parasol. Immediately gets it out of the picture. That's huge for Dash. Delano's Parasol is no joke. Using punch move to iframe through car. Yeah, that's that's a thing. You can do that. This matchup's hilarious. All right, we got reflector coming in right away. Respecting the item drop. Oh wow, Dash actually almost overcommitted to bang bang bang. That would have been huge and dangerous. Setting up Lenny, Bates Bella. Coming in and then gets a nice clean conversion off of the beam super, caused Lenny to explode. Why does Peacock do that kind of damage? That's godlike. Well, I agree, it's a good team. I genuinely think that Duo is like a the weakest combination of the three. So the fact that Dash can make it work so well, I mean, credit where it's due, it works out fantastic in this case because Dash has set play built around it, uh, around the scaling. It's it's just crazy. It's like, it's so hard to make Duo work. And Dash makes the dream not a meme. 2 advantage over Gelato. Like, that's not something you see every day. That's tough to do. He used to play Valentine Peacock at first, but he didn't like Val much, so he went to Cerebella because he liked her voice. Really? Good old Christina V gave you your team. <clears throat> and 
Okay, uh, Dash going back to his defensive start. Gelato trying to going back to his defensive start. This is kind of a mirror of the first round. BRB. but excellent blocking from Dash. Well done. Solid block on that item drop, not really falling for that kind of pressure. Trying to save as much health as possible. Push blocking where it seems reasonable to do so. Breaks through the armor with bang bang bang. Not expecting Dash to commit to the bang 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 is of course an incredibly dangerous commitment. It does give your opponent a huge opportunity to get in. Which would have been a lot for Gelato, but Gelato believed that he could armor through it. No way that Dash would bang, bang, bang and break his armor. Dash was one step ahead. Just kind of knew what Gelato would be expecting. That's hilarious. Just want to bell in there. <clears throat> hey there, I controls. No, it is not. Winner's round two. Hello, Sparrow. Thank you for the 1-bit donation. Reminder that we are, of course, a non-profit stream. I'll do my speech in a hot second, because I you know, kind of have to. It's commitment at this point. Um, but Gelato is not into losers. 3-0. That's crazy. Not something you get to see every day. Next up, of course, is Hereupon versus Facade. Facade is already ready to go. He's been, like, just waiting to click join game in, like, minutes. He's just been hovering over the mouse, like, fiercely staring at it. Hereupon, on the other hand... Uh, he's taking a nap. Where you at, buddy? <clears throat> Cloud King has taken it over Undying 3-0. According to him, it's 2,000 though, but same thing. Very interesting sign noon. I hope that you guys are playing... Off stream. All right, here upon is ready to go. <clears throat> What script? I've never... I've never had a script. I just kind of say the same thing over and over again because people learn through repetition. For those guys who don't know, I used to be a professor. I wasn't actually called a professor because I didn't have a PhD, but I, like, I, I taught a university class. <clears throat> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for donating bits to our stream. Of course, we are a non-profit stream. All donations go straight back to the players. It goes towards funding and then increasing the prize pool for the end of the month prize pool tournaments. If you wish to support the players of Skullgirls and wish to help the community grow, you are donating to the right place. All subscription money goes to the same cause. Thank you very much for your generosity. Yeah, it's unexpected. I only run Skullgirls Get Great and, uh, you know, train my coworkers at work and, uh, hmm. Wow, actually everything kind of goes back to me teaching, huh? Weird. Unputting airs? Wait, what do you mean? Lecturer? Yeah, actually, um, for all presentations since, like, freshman year of college, I've actually always done them impromptu. Because I found out the more I write a script, the worse I do. I'd rather just act like I'm trying to talk to people. It ends up working a lot better because it sounds a lot more natural, and it, it also ends up being just a bit more engaging in general. For, like, all viewers. 
That's actually why, if you watch, like, from 2016, like, when I first started participating with, like, Get Great and everything, I actually became less formal over time. <laughs> yeah, it's the mix-up. I was a professor, but, like, not on paper. They were allowed to pay me minimum wage because I didn't have a PhD. The parries of a golden god hereupon coming in from downtown! This is a classic big band experience that you expect from a player of his skill level. Did not have OTG to convert off of that wall bounce, or not, well, I mean, converted off the wall bounce with the super, but did not have enough, uh, did not have OTG to convert off the ground after he carried with the super. I mean, drive is glorious. Wow, that's simple kidding the counter hit! What was Facade expecting? Nobody knows. Hero upon was expecting to get glorious damage and parry into a perfect count. God! How does a man have that kind of. Okay. 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 Oh, well, we got that Bella coming in. Wow. <laughs> hit that edge hitbox of the sound stun. That, of course, does mean they get instantly hard knockdown, which is unfortunate for Hiropon. Gave Facade an extra chance. Fortunately, though, Facade's Bella was not the asset he needed to be able to turn this entirely around. I mean, not taking away anything away from Facade. Facade did numbers of damage on Hiropon. That was a fantastic show of skill. But he's going to need to step it up just a little bit. I think he can do it. I believe in him. He definitely demonstrated that he has everything he needs to be able to defeat Hiropon. I see Facade's Bell is a kind of new. Yeah, Facade doesn't usually play Bell, I think. They normally play Fortune Double Philia or something like that. Because Philia is the best character by far. There's no doubt about it. And uh, whenever they play Fortune, it's always a sight. They also used to play a little bit of Fuqua instead of Fortune. I just kept on telling him to drop Fuqua and go back to Fortune. <coughs> <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will be right back. Enjoy the show. Solid pressure seeing right through that tick throw setup. Oh! Delaying the descent with the barrel, getting that instant overhead. I mean, it's not really an instant overhead, it was just kind of a. a tricky overhead. Unfortunately, a little bit late on that conversion off the ground. That does mean that the, the opponent was able to tech out. Pressure has shifted just a little bit. Hereupon, trying to be fancy with the parries, but it's getting a little risky. Facade's making sure that the parries are coming through from the assists, leaving double free to punish gloriously. Oh, not jumping high enough to avoid that snap. I mean, that snap is huge. It's kind of hard to avoid that in general. Facade picks good colors. Yeah. Have a wonderful night, Varian. Oh wow, did not finish it off with a Seracopter into a Super into a DUC. Not what I expected out of Facade. Facade, you sandbagging? Don't be giving this up, this is dangerous. That 4 meter is scary. Good blocks, good blocks. Oh wow, wow! Not only blocks the overhead, but also just texts the grab. Wow, really aware of Facade's options in the situation. Really aware of uh, double options in that situation. God, wow, I'm just tripping over my words. This is impossible.
This is scary. Show me that godlike movement! You didn't. Okay. Guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. It's not really a secret because I keep on saying this every single time. I'm gonna expose my man facade. Facade <clears throat> is a very emotional player. Losing a game like that is crippling. He's very momentum driven. He kinda needs to win multiple games in a row to like really, really feel himself. This is gonna be rough. Um Facade being down 0-2, especially after a match like that, is gonna... It's gonna be tough. I haven't given up on Facade. Facade being able to keep his cool and play at the best of his ability, has, that, that might have just been crippled right there. See, not clean conversion off the uh, heavy counter hit. That's okay. Facade, you have plenty more coming in your way. It's gotta be smart. Unmashable reset. I mean, it's not actually... Is that unmashable? Yeah, because uh, the air version of Gregor does not have hit stop. Went for a fridge reset, monster to make it kind of safe, tried to punish it, but like when they're in blocks them and then monster comes out, it's still kind of kind of a thing. Wow, falling jab, getting a nice hit, getting that snap, but no, just a little bit too far away. That means Ban's gonna get out of there. Wasted meter, that's so unfortunate. Oh, going for the Those look like squiggly resets, honestly. Not converting off the OTG because you don't have anything you can convert off of that for Kara Super. That's a thing. Went for a dash up grab. Unfortunately, it does not work out because we got Kara Super coming in from downtown. There's no option you can do there. You can't cancel into Super, can't DHC out or anything of the sort. Nice. Stopping the block string after a medium. Playing smart. Keeping your cool. Picking up after that air grab. And I have OTG, waits for the restand, goes for the land, or I mean, gets the restand, goes for the land cancel. Nice clean hit confirmed. Chases up after the tech. Good tech chase, that's perfect. Jason Peacock right back into a corner. Needs to go for, nice, nice hit confirmed, there we go. Got that grab. Got that kill. My character didn't have to go, we got this. Ooh, tick throws. Not really a tick throw, sort of a tick throw. It's like a Walmart brand tick throw. Right, we got the diamond drop. Convert with diamond dynamo. Not gonna use OTG, just gonna chase. Okay. Call it with SSJ. Not okay. Automatically doubles turn because cat heads. Oh, got a little bit greedy with that reset. Doesn't matter, got another, another hit confirmed. Did not commit to it here upon giving facade a chance. Why you gotta do this to my mans? Like counter hit. Make him pay for that. That should have been here upon's game. If here upon's gonna sacrifice, facade needs to cash out. No! A drop of the century. Facade, why are you playing Bella? What are you doing? Why does it gotta be like that? All things considered, Facade is of course not out of it yet. Um, Facade is not going to lose his round three, um, which of course means three. Three. Facade versus Cloud King. Oh, it's gonna be a tough set. But I don't doubt him just yet. That set will of course be off stream. On stream will be Dash versus Hero Pond. Let's go ahead and get that going. That close. Hero Pond. Dash. Hero Pond. Make sure people are not reporting scores. Gelato reported 3 0. Also put our it online. Very insane. 3 2 3. Also reported that online. Awesome. Awesome. She's ready to go. Waiting on Hereupon to rejoin. Hero Pond, you wet. Go ahead and ask Hero Pond to join. Right.
A lot of 3 0s in this bracket. Yeah, it's kind of wild. You don't usually get to see that. Wow, jumping in instantly, ready up, ready to go. That's what I want to see. All right, guys. These are both really, really phenomenal players, and both of them play a pretty mean peacock. How do you guys think this is gonna go? Hey there, Yaya. -Yo. Welcome. A little bit late. If you were here a little bit sooner, you could have participated. It would have been amazing. I've been so happy. I really wanted to see you play. Got an incredible lineup of players. Magnificent, our boss himself. I hope your personal stuff went well. A lot better than this set is going for Dash. Dash is, of course, in a, under a lot of pressure. Wow, hereupon getting the one read on him. Tried to give... Dash tried to escape. Thought he had a moment to hold the bomb. But unfortunately, that light bomber applied... Or did the, the work that he needed to make it here upon his turn yet again. Dash has a moment of neutral right here. He needs to be very careful how he weaves his way out. Got a couple of hits from here upon, but unfortunately here upon was not able to convert. Dash was from his hit confirm. Went back to an early state of neutral. Got grabbed out of the air. And you know what? Here upon's gonna carry him all the way back to the corner. Psych! Gonna get that mid-screen vortex. A little bit of work just before the corner. Catch Dash looking. That brass came in from downtown just to make that uh, pressure safe. Didn't even need it. Reset worked. Wow! It didn't kill. That's hilarious. Ow! Oh! The Golden God! Make this Bella do some work! In the gym! <laughs> there we go. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> the moment I saw Hereupon jump, I'm just like, what? Why? <clears throat> that just made you want to play Bella? Yo, I don't know. Honestly, every time I watch a Bella player play, it makes me want to play Bella. Well, it's really cool. It's kind of dumb. Also really cool. I also have super secret Bella Tech. It's not really super secret, I've told a whole bunch of people about it. You can get full screen 360 with serious center stage assist. Kinda of funny. Who should you drop? Drop Parasol. Stop being Team EU. I don't know why you're playing Parasol. Wow, that brass barely whiffens everything Swiftbox needed to make sure both those characters were completely eliminated. Dash has got such a strong start this time around. An entire adjustment, very strong adjustment at that. Wow, Lenny's just chilling. And then he goes. Nice seeing you, Lenny. Why would you drop your parasol? Because I don't want to fight it. That's about it. That's not entirely true. Your parasol's fine. Um, your Val's your weakest link. But your parasol's the most boring. That might just be because I fight Penny all the time, and Penny has shown me everything parasol can possibly do. I don't honestly know. <clears throat> yeah, by FGC dad logic, that means you should keep playing it. Totally true. Totally true. Up and Lenny, picking up off that OTG with Beam Super. Lenny goes boom, no item drop ready, so we're gonna have to teleport and try to do an approach. Not work out, did not have Oki set up ready to go. <clears throat> George doing God's work. 
Don't know, George just right off the screen is just like, you know what, I don't even want you here. Just immediately go away. Ooh, catch him low. That's gotta go low. The Sage always says. Did not make that link, that's unfortunate. Dagger did not last long enough. Probably means that Dash was shaking out of it. Respect. Kara canceling lock and load in Diamond Dynamo. That hit stop being close enough. That means Band cannot respond. Using OTG to use Diamond Dynamo again because why not? DHC into Peacock's level 3. Feature added in uh, Skullgirl's Grand Beta of 2017 or 2016 or whatever. When was it? 2017? I think it was 2017. Sainun, if your nerves get to you in tournaments and make you cry, then uh, that means you need to participate in more tournaments. Getting over your nerves in a tournament is actually an acquired skill. A lot of people don't believe that. Some people think they're just not made for tournaments. No, like, no. Nobody's made for tournaments automatically. You just... It's kind of tourney experience. Yeah, what Yo-Yo said. Wolf King, if you had been completely done in round one, that's literally impossible because this tournament is double elimination. <clears throat> you would have at least had two chances to play, and both those sets would have been valuable experiences for you. Sign up next time. I challenge you to sign up next time. That brass to make that setup safe again. That air grab, though, of course, does confirm. That means there's no tech in it. Uh, green burst paint. Got two whole strings on here. We got one more string, is what I would say, but of course we went for H bomber, which means there was no quick conversion outside of super. This goes for Car to punch the raw tag, gets that counter hit, medium counter hit damage, of course, because it is a super. Lenny blows up off screen. Rest in peace. One for a tick there. Try to bait out any sort of pressure from Hiropon. Hiropon delayed his reversal, tricking Dash into thinking he was safe. Respecting the item drop, try to chicken block it. Damn. Damn, Dash's peak of just blood out. That's crazy. Kara SSJ gets punished by the 360. Very unfortunate. DP to convert off of the uh, final hit. Or the Kara, Kara conversion. Uh, what is it actually called? Like in terms of slaying. Like when you early cancel. 360? Is there any, like is there like an official term for that? I know when you let it rock, we just call it letting it rock. Like, what's the Skullgirl slang for just actually canceling it like most people do? Yeah, Pika Mirror 2 too, seriously. Slanging? <laughs> that is not what it's called, but thank you. I know what you're getting at, Hydra. No worries. <clears throat> Round start, really aggressive double jump approach from here upon. Dash was kind of doing his aggressive stance himself, just trying to hold his ground. Unfortunately, did have to give it up and jump backwards, but does convert off of that lock and load assist hit. Let's scale damage in a little bit. This is 2v3 though, that ratio bonus doing mad work. Half of double is already dead, but Devil's had a nice confirm on Peacock in the corner. Let's Peacock tag out, unfortunately. Slide on under, car cancel into 360. Not 360. Fuck, no, it's Diamond Dynamo. Some glorious damage. Chicken block land cancel, the last hit of car. Hoping that he can get an early 360 on any sort of a DHC. Did not work out, unfortunately. Kind of cheeky tech, though. I do respect that out of Hiropon. That was pretty cool. Wow. Hits him right over George. That's hilarious. I wonder if you can do something with that. And, like, get him back in the direction of George or something. That'd be kind of cool. Like, maybe DHC into, like, double car. Then, uh, make the car knock him, come out of the left side, and then hit him back into George. That'd be kind of funny. I guess it would have to come out of the right side, because it hits you behind the car. That's weird. That does not work. Because Hirobon wasn't jump start up, I guess. Or can you just hold up? I don't think you can just hold up there. I think a hit stop stops you. <clears throat> Do you 
George, making that setup safe. Go ahead and go for another low. That low did connect. And here upon Peacock. Super spooky. Text that grab. Saw it coming. That beam super did not work. But that low sure did. Just go low. Is that a low? Is that actually a low? Maybe you just got hit. I don't actually know. Oh my god. Hereupon pulling out the taunt. Now I'm not gonna say this is uncalled for, because you know what? I've heard I've heard a rumor here or there that Dash likes to pull out that taunt himself in quick match whenever he gets a perfect on his opponent. Well that wasn't a perfect. I do I don't know. I, I feel no surprise that Hereupon is popping off in that situation. I just I just imagine him at his desk just going off, like literally flipping his chair upside down and shit. That's one hell of a set. That was one hell of a set, I have to say. As I mentioned, you knocked Dash into losers. Congratulations here upon you have gone on to grand finals from winner's side. Losers round four is of course also on stream. This does mean that Gelato will be versing the winner of Facade versus Cloud King. Did they report that score? Let me double check. Cloud 1-3-0 against Facade, so that means you will be fighting Cloud. Cloud versus Gelato? Losers? Semi-finals. That's weird. That's weird to say out loud. I don't know, man. I did not expect either of these players. I mean, I guess I these players had to eventually fall into losers, but like they fell into losers a lot earlier than I expected. It's kind of creepy, honestly. I mean, I guess it was just seated that way, and people had points. Competitive tension. The lore! I love it! Said Hydra himself. Selves? Next up on stream, we have Gelato versus Cloud King. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for them to go ahead and join. Do-do-do-do-do. Cloud, Lotto. Give it a minute or two. Minor rumor lore that Crank just said. Which one? Oh yeah, oh yeah. The uh... no, I literally know this happens because someone in uh, Get Great was joking about, it. or not joking about it. Like it was just, this is gonna be like, wow, I just fought Swift Fox Dash and he taunted me after perfecting me. So I, uh... <laughs> it's a little bit more than just lore. What's the lore behind Crank's name? Would you like to know? Would you like to know? Well, all these players are writing up, I might as well tell you guys. Um, it's actually really, really long, so I'm not gonna bother telling the whole story. A long story short, it's actually the name of a philosophy where the idea is that to get people to cooperate, give them a common enemy, and become that common enemy. It sounds really dramatic and ridiculous, um, but it makes sense in context, which I'm not going to bother sharing because I don't have the time for it, because this next matchup is going to be fantastic. The idea is that I played crank the Crank Machine, which was a character in a specific situation, and... By being that character, I was the goofball and made everyone upset at me. And that made everyone want to work together because I was the common enemy. And that's how I got everyone to work together. And it's not like a play or something. This is like an actual thing that happened. But, like, that's not as cool as the actual thing that's happening right now. Cloud is pulling no punches. No squiggly. You haven't seen him since uh, Winners Round 2. We can probably assume that he's just been going off and dropped this quickly. This is the cloud we know and love. <laughs> yeah, Cloud was playing Squiggly, yo yo, you missed it. There were some really cool setups, actually. Oh, there's some really smart things.
It was like uh, he would use DMB to get under his opponent and then car cancel on SBO to like stop him from like mashing up reversal or anything. It was, it was really weird. Only tip. Really simple stuff, but like at the same time, stuff you don't really see too often. I respect that. Oh, that Fugazi knuckle to space just a little bit too far away to making sure that they are not actually blocking it. That's unfortunate. Oh, Cloud does get air grabbed. Gets air grabbed again. It's working. The ladder like it. Goes for number three. Cloud expecting this is no way there'd be a third one. Why would there be a third one? That wouldn't be a thing. Having to burn all three meter to get the kill. This might be worth it, but not really. This kind of sucks. Well, Gelato not going down without a fight. Gelato wants to make sure that Cloud's Bella does not get away. I respect that. Really making a statement there. Gets that light counter hit. Are we optimal? We're not optimal. We just went for like a like a meaty setup there. Got the barrel mix up. Let's go. Punish the teacup with another light counter hit. Pick up. This should kill. Just use one meter. Don't even need a meter, but wow, okay. That looks tough to do, but you know what? Leave it to Gelato to make sure he's consistent to do that. I'm consistent in doing that. There we go. Got caught in the burst bait! Heavy counter hit! No! Level 5 to kill. First run goes to Cloud. More important than my actual name, the lore behind my icon is kind of funny. Does anyone remember Funky Hellboy? And here, tier shot. Start off the round. Stop any sort of space building that Val tries to do. This play is so beautiful. This one, I kind of want to admire it. I'm a commentator, I can't just do that. Using the orange vial, orange vial of course does uh, add input delay to your thing, making mix-ups borderline literally unreactable. True mix-ups. Orange vial was a mistake. I always wondered why people just didn't always use orange vial. I like literally don't understand. It's pretty much a guaranteed reset. People started using Orange Vial a lot more lately. But there was like a period of like two or three years where no one used it and I don't get it. Yeah, I know Controls uses it a lot. Silly slide to convert. I've been hit by that one too many times. Titan Knuckle. Gets a sliding knockdown. No clean setup after that. I also got buffs so it lasts long and doesn't go away on non-super hit. Yeah, true that. I guess that's so. I guess that's true. It still was already really good. I don't know. I personally feel like it was already really good. And again, not many people played Val in general. Those are the 50-50, not doing the same side. Galato got mixed. Expected something sneaky, but nah, Cloud's just sticking to the basics. That's all he's gotta do. Power Super to get the kill! Parasol incoming, what's the setup? Same side anti-air grab. Good blocks from Gelato. <clears throat> Gelato committed to blocking the same side. Cloud expecting Gelato to adapt to the uh, cross-up and expecting him to block a cross-up. It's not the case this time, in fact. The heavy hit, that's gonna kill. Got points! Cloud up 2-0 against Gelato, this is rough. While Gelato has a secured fourth split, fourth place, he definitely doesn't want it. In fact, third place, second place, and first place are the only people that get money. So, this will be the first be great in a hot minute where Gelato doesn't get money. That's kind of spooky to think about. So, I kind of kind of think Gelato's a little bit has got a little focus. Got to got to focus. Got to get get that little focus in and do that uh do the doodle good old good. Heavy Bomber is a funny move. 
Yeah, Gelato wants his $5 candy bar money. Well, that was Parasol. A very valuable asset of Gelato. Immediately eliminated. Well, that was just spaghetti everywhere. That was that was just so stupidly funny. Yeah. So Cloud wasted two meter for that counter, um, and Gelato got a double snap. If there's a way you want to give Gelato a chance, this is how you do it. Alright, we're gonna go full sliding knockdown there, not using OTG, of course. Went for the barrel setup, did not make it safe by, because he, uh, you know, Lock and Load was not actually making barrel safe. The reverse double snap! What was that earlier about there being spaghetti everywhere? Is 700 scale damage? Hot damn. For perspective, Fireball Super has some of the most. Well, actually, that's like chip damage. Never mind. It doesn't really count. It's about 100 more than Seracopter. That's pretty cool. And Battle Blood is a single hit, too, right? That's godlike. Uh, is it one hit or two hits? I forget, is Battle Blood two hits? It's one, okay. Well! Bobby King takes it, 3-0. Well played by Jelano, he did fantastic this tournament, got really, really far. This tournament is fully stacked. I'm sure Jel Jelano got valuable experience. He will be adapt and be ready for next time. But this time, we're going to focus on Dash versus Cloud King. Already ready to go. Readied up. Cloud needs to change its location. Cloud needs the change. Wait, what? What? Cloud needs the change. His location. Whatever. I give up. I give up! Safe jump to try and approach on Dash. Man, still playing the Squiggly. Maybe he just likes this matchup. Maybe he just really likes Squiggly against Peacock. That's crazy to think about. Or maybe Cloud is trying to save the tech. Trying to get the jump on Dash. He's definitely not getting the jump on Dash right now. Dash looking real comfy with his health lead. 2v3 advantage too. Bang, bang, bang. Coming in from downtown. Sets up Lenny. Does not cancel him to... Beam super because reasons, who cares? Air Show George coming in, apply pressure, item drop, knock him further away. On hit it pushes him away. On block it pulls him forward or something like that. I don't know how this works. Look at me pretending I play this game. Vacuum effects are weird in general. They allow all sorts of crazy shenanigans. Ooh, Lenny eating the hit of jumping light kick. Uh I mean, just gonna chip him out either way. No, you can't cancel into Super After Battle, but yes, because you're technically airborne. Cloud needs to change his location. Uh... Oh, real robot agrees. He probably doesn't want to give away his tech prior to CB. Who knows? Who knows? Jump up and actually respect it. Your dash is just trying to build some space and get away. It's worked. Oh, he was going for the full run despite the push blocks. It's fighting against the wind. Forced to respect the air show George because of that second jump. Gets in with the jumping like kick against the beam super, but unfortunately did not want to commit because of Lenny. Would have otherwise had to have gone for like a, I don't know, 
Did he have a punch charge? I don't think he had punch charge. Otherwise, he could have gone for like a like land cancel center stage, a daisy, and that probably would have worked. Would have gotten past Lenny. I don't think Dash would have expected it. Mirror Peacock is. <laughs> nah, Mirror Peacock is one of the most fun matchups to watch. In this situation, we're not watching Mirror Peacock. Watching double go off at Peacock in the corner. Cloud already has infinite more moment, infinitely more momentum than he had last time. But I would say, but we return back to neutral and Dash has built all the space he needs to get away. Oh, actually using the approach there, being a little bit aggressive. Trying to catch Cloud off guard, did not work out. Cloud has successfully pressured him all the way into the corner, gave some blocks done. Baits out the punch move! This could be huge, is what I would say if we don't drop combos. Level 3 is going to come in from downtown, immediately kill that double. That double is a very valuable asset. Core asset to most powerful teams. Are new things still being discovered in this game, like new tech and stuff? Yes, on a regular basics. Uh, basics? Basis. Uh, in fact, whatever we do know has still not been optimized. Um, I was talking about this a long time ago. I think it was about a year ago. Um, people are going to start optimizing off of... Purposely getting hit by L George assist because L George assist is one of the most common assists in the game, and it can actually reduce the hit or uh, the what's it called amount of recovery frames you're actually in because you'll be in hit stun instead. And I already seen people combo off of the fact that they've been hit by L George and it helped them like actually convert better. People are gonna optimize off of that, and that's gonna be fucking hilarious. Can't wait for that shit. People are going off in this game. This game is probably at 60% of its full potential. I don't want to say a ridiculously low number because this game has been thoroughly researched, but there's a lot more we can do. There's also like weird quote unquote glitches still being discovered, like uh, Bella's diamond just kind of going straight through Parasol for no reason. We still don't know why that happened. We can't recreate it because I don't think anyone's tried. Oh, that's gonna be scary, yeah, because Lock and Load is ready there to go, punishing SBO. SBO is a risky decision to be there. I don't want to be able to play the Cloud team is using. Um, me too, but for dumber reasons. Wow, that chip out, of course, I mean, Lenny does a glorious amount of chip out damage. Very, very powerful super. Jumping over lock and load, but we're chipping away. Bang, 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 coming in, but now we're gonna pay the price. Like I said before, bang, bang, bang does leave you really vulnerable and easy to approach. Double got in, you taking advantage of that bang, bang, bang's recovery time. Fortunately though, Peacock was able to escape, apply plenty of pressure. Uh, Cloud got a little bit too aggressive with double. That did mean that uh, that double had to pay with her life. In with jumping light kick. Conversion off that wall bounce. Tried to get in a little bit of damage from that Lenny. Of course, that angle was awkward, and I'm pretty sure Cloud knew that wasn't going to happen. We're just kind of hoping for money hits. And respect the standing light kick that does lead immediately into a concho for a nice clean mix up there. Just get some low. Just go low. Wasn't even a counter hit. Wasn't actually like a mix up. They weren't blocking. I don't know what the hell was happening. They were just trying to move around. Maybe caught him up forwarding or something? I don't know. The neutral! Power kids looking to 360! That's gonna kill. Cloud just leaves. He's done with that shit. Dash moves on! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the grand finals! Thank you, Dash, for leaving the lobby and please rejoin soon, though. So, I mean, we did want you to clear your score. So, respect that. Thank you so much. What was that final score? Was that. 3-0 or 3-1? I think it was 3-0. It was super tense near the end. It was 3-0. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a lot of grudge matches I gotta... I gotta do this common breaker. Like, I need the... Like, Yo-Yo wants the salty run back. Controls... I want the salty run back. I'm assuming you're going to common breaker. Please tell me you're going to common breaker.
You're not going to CB? Alright, well, I guess I won't get the salty run back against you. Doesn't matter, I want to set online. That basically counts, right? That was 10% of my true power. <laughs> no, it does not count. Okay, that's fair. When will I be able to do the next first attempt with you? You're going to CEO Taku? You'll try. Okay, keep me posted. That spacing just goes in with the low. God, yeah, again. I make it sound like I'm so surprised, you know? Like, that's kind of my job as a commentator. But, like, 80% of hits are gonna be lows. How do you like your god button? Coming in with a reflector, forcing Peacock to respect it and block it, giving a small window to approach. Nice DHC into Lenny, letting you set up there. Also get the item drop, which is gonna let you go. Oh my god! Alright, wait, wait, hold on. Does Dash got the tech? Does Dash know that he can start immediately charging an item after this? He does not. He did not know. That's very unfortunate. Starts loading an item right afterwards, that's okay. I mean, he might know, he just didn't do it. That's the thing that Psychopath used to do, and when McPeanuts found out from Psychopath that you can do that, he freaked the fuck out. I remember McPeanuts used to play this game, that was hilarious. Good times, I learned so much from that guy. Not as much as I'm learning right now, is what I would say, when the punch move just went right through brass, and I don't know what just happened, my brain just ate itself. How did that happen? What just happened? Was it just like a really delayed punch? I guess it was just a really delayed punch move. The iframes just like... The entire startup was like... The active frames of brass. I guess it was M brass too. A little bit slower. Stupid road roller. Road roller is godlike. It lets you immediate... Because despite the hit stop, it counts as a cooldown on item drops. So you can immediately load another item drop after a road roller hits. Which is what you should have done. As Psychopath, he's got the tech. He's optimized off of that, I think. Although, I feel really stupid telling you of all people to go to Psychopath or Peacock tech. So, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't listen to a single thing I say, but that's okay. I'm gonna pretend I have some level of authority here. Heavy Bros! Coming in with the assist for that counter call. Double gun that work on Peacock too. Got damage going in from both ends. Do we want to snap? No, we're actually just going to go for the reset because we want a lot of damage on Peacock is what I would say. But we went for a grab reset, which of course scales the combo to 50% for those of you guys who do not know. Going to carry all the way to the corner. Going to use a car super to finish it off. Before the undizzy is... Uh, this is this is weird. I don't know how to feel about that. That was just concerning at the best. At best that was weird. There was so much weird stuff that happened there, I totally lost my train of thought. This is very unfortunate. Also, Swift Sauce dashes Bella's, like, back at full health. This, that kind of sucks. Wow, went for an E-break to try and convert instead of just going for the A-train for the sliding knockdown and play okay. That's okay. Snap him back out. Heck, the grab! That looked like it was on reaction, too! The Golden God! Oh, this sucks! This really sucks! <coughs> Heavy brass. Oh no, it was actually medium brass. He went for the OTG conversion. Okay. Is he a taunt? He does not. Drops not to build it. That's not good. Gets grabbed. Fortunate. No clean conversion, no beam super to help get that a little bit of extra damage in. I mean, Cliff Fox is kind of living on a prayer. Hereupon taking the second game. Reminder that Dash is coming in from the loser's side, so Hereupon only needs to win one set. Dash needs to win two. He needs to knock his opponent into losers and then, of course, win himself. As per the standard grand final process. <clears throat> one game apiece right now, though, for this first set. Looking kind of sketch. Hey there, Leo. How you doing today? 
you're on the stream, you can pull it over. People don't settle down. So, yeah. What? I haven't seen a single Val. Uh, you... Cloud was playing Valentine against his opponent Gelato in Loser's Semis. <laughs> Who's Val? Hey there. At that overhead counter hit, don't go low, just go overhead. Dash rewriting the history. Go for a red- wait, was that a real red burst bait? I guess it like punches delayed burst baits, like you burst bait on reaction or something. Unless you're just mashing. That's some quick match strat. Caught him low! Item drop going right through, Ten Raiha whiffing! That's a- that's a real rough item drop to whiff, because the Ten Raiha is of course extremely valuable. We have item drop? No, we do not. So we can't do anything more off of that. Bang, bang, bang. Squeezing a little bit of extra damage. Forcing his opponent to respect it. Yeah, that approach is rough. Dash with a very commanding victory. Commanding? Yeah, I guess that's, that's what it's called, right? Like a commanding lead? Glorious victory? I don't know. It was, it was a very definite victory. It, was very, it made kind of a statement there. That, like, hey, hey. Dash is not out of it. The set might very well be his. Very strong victory. You were going to pretend you had authority. Reminded you me of when someone driving gets annoyed and threatens to pull over. Oh yeah! <laughs> I see what you mean. I run the stream, I can pull it over. Yeah. Sparrow, thank you for all the bits donations. This is of course Grand Final, so I'm gonna try and keep this short, but all the donations go to the players because we are a non-profit stream. Thank you very much! Got a first clean conversion from Dash, catching two characters, doing glorious damage to Lenny, converting a beam super to kill two characters at once, is what I would say, but we got a car super to get out, no DHC because we don't got any meter. Living on a prayer though, chipped out from George, Light George of course. Control's going oh my Wamo. Shinderu. <laughs> All sorts of whack ass trades. Let's go. I don't know how to even commentate this. I need to practice commentating Peacock versus Peacock because that at the end just there, I just wanted to like laugh so hard, and I couldn't keep my composure at all. And frankly speaking, I guess I didn't. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a bracket reset! I wish both those players left the lobby so that we could reset the scores, but that's okay! We're gonna pretend I can remember scores. Dash takes at 3-1, knocking here upon into losers. This means this set is winner take all! 0-0 zero, zero right now. Yo! Flash stepping, weaving between the light, George. Unfortunately, it was right into Dash's arms. Got some combo and did in the corner. Just finishing it up, cashing out with everything he's got. He's got another meter. Chose not to DHC, and that was a dangerous decision. Wants to save that meter, but unfortunately, that means that about a third of Double's life is going to come back to Hereupon. Hereupon's just got to play cool. Not called double assist, play smart. I feel like Hereupon is more than capable of doing that. Went for a fake teleport to try and turn the pressure around. That's what you got to do. Fortunately, it did not work out. Dash was already ready for that. Weaving around potential hitboxes. Raw tags into ban. Super dangerous position. Getting glorious damage on that ban. Losing all, more than like only two fifths of his house health, I would like to say. Roughly. I only know very few damage numbers. Like the chip damage that Uko does is like 980 or something now. Nerfed down from 1100. There are very few nerf damage numbers. I now also know that there's 700 damage fully scaled from battle, but... Oh no! <laughs> Man, what a victory. That was a short game. Dash up 1-0 in this final set of the evening. 
We haven't had someone coming out of losers finals run it back in a hot minute. It's been literally like six months since this has happened. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen now. But I am not taking away anything from Hereupon. Hereupon showed that he was more than capable of defeating Dash in a set before. He can do it again. Dash may have made some major adjustments, but Hereupon can pull out some crazy things out of his pocket. Whoa, the push block in the air to delay Peacock's descent means that the... What's it called? Trip Guard did not work out for Hereupon. This means that Dash was able to get a little bit of damage in on the uh, double. A little bit more with that hit, but Bang 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 was of course body blocked, which means that Double was able to recover, not take the full blunt of that damage there. Sets up Lenny after the hard knockdown, or not hard knockdown, is, is it a hard knockdown? It's soft knockdown from uh, Punch Move. And one for the Beam Super, but unfortunately, it was ready to adjust for that. Double got a nice hit confirmed Peacock's in the corner, this is exactly where you want Peacock to be. Bates the raw tag out, Dash, that's predictable, everyone knows you're gonna do it. Snap him out of there! Went for, uh, like, tried to bait a grab tech, I guess. I think that's what he wanted. I mean, to be fair, Dash has been really, really good at um, reaction teching, but not what came out. You can, of course, option select that. Push block, uh, tag. Or what's the tag? Push block grab tech. There we go. Tech. Ech. Ech. Car canceling punch moving to Lenny. Set up Lenny on the floor. Got St. Patrick's Peacock blowing up. Trying to find some confetti inside here upon Peacock. This office is gonna kill. No additional meter needed. What's up next? <laughs> Crouching light kick to just inch the Lenny a little bit forward, you know, just build that space just a little bit. Hereupon still was able to weave his way out of there. Unfortunately though, that SSJ was blocked by that Peacock. Oh my god! Oh my god, we got a taunt like that? Call the police! Alright, here upon. He's, this, that wasn't even the last match, last match of the set. He taunted and wasn't even the last match of the set. He's that confident. Here upon, I mean, you taunted this guy. You're gonna let him do that to you? He, he's, he won up to you. He taunted you one whole game early. I say that like you already lost. Like, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna believe that. Here upon, I want you to run this back. You can beat this combo breaker winner. That's weird to say. It's so weird to say that anyone besides Switch or Sonic Fox has one combo breaker. But he has. It's crazy. Switch Fox Dash is of course one of the best players in the world. All right. Set up item drop. I want to see it. No, you went for bang, bang, bang. Why? Roll the roller, da. Lock and load. One for the teleport. 50-50. One more grand double vortex. Wow, baiting the teleport, jabbing there, auto correct. Being the god tech. I don't know. What do you call auto correct? It's just a mechanic, really. A god mechanic. I'm just imagining, like, some holy vehicle being repaired. Punch move into Beam Super. Expecting the airshow. Weaves right over the airshow, George. Land cancels with the item drop. Not able to really build any space. It's chipped out. Um, we got double coming in, which is good, because Dan needs all the time in the world to heal. Nice! That combo drop is gonna be glorious. You need to buy as much time as possible, but not keeping an eye on that George is gonna cost Ban more than half his life bar. That's so unfortunate. All of that red health could have been recoverable. That was Hereupon's moment. That was Hereupon's chance to, like, really buy time and build it back. He had 57 seconds on the clock as well, but unfortunately, Dash is not giving that chance. Dash is the Skullgirls B Great April 2019 Champion. I will be reaching out to you regarding your prize pool. Of course, the top three players have been here upon Dash and Cloud King. All three get a bite sized chunk out of the prize pool. Standard breakdown of 70, 20, 10%. You're the genuine article. I'm going to pretend I know what that means. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for Skullgirls Be Great. We go live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. First three tournaments of the month. Build up points, and that helps your helps you in seeding during the fourth week of the month. 
which is the prize pool tournament itself. If the month has a f fifth week, we of course do a special event tournament, you know, like a team tournament or something of the sort, which will happen next month. Next month, fifth week, you'll be a team tournament. So start reaching out to friends, start practicing with them. You may be playing in that Pokemon style tournament. Fantastic, it's usually a good time. Everyone enjoys themselves. It's a good, easy, calm week. If you guys saw some incredible plays today, and goddamn, you better have seen some incredible plays today. People played fan-fucking-tastic today. Then, and you want to improve your play so you can play like that? Well, let me tell you, the first step to get to that level is practicing perfectly. Practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice does, and that's our philosophy here at Skullgirls. Get great every Saturday at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, etc., etc. But we try to match you up against an even opponent and provide constructive criticism. We won't tell you everything that's wrong with your play, we'll just tell you what you need to focus on most so you can hit the next level, because people improve in steps. And the first correct step is, of course, participating with us and practicing as a team Easing your way into the Skullgirls community is the way to do it. We've been around for like two and a half years. I like to pretend I know what I'm talking about. But I definitely have comrades with me that do know what they're talking about. Uh, tune in for that. If you guys want to just chill and chat and give advice, that's cool too. That's cool too. Wow. Being sick has done a number on my tongue. I literally can't talk. That's crazy. You know, I think I... All things considered, I don't mean to toot my own horn. I think I commentated pretty well considering I have throat cancer. Like, it, that, this this was this turned out pretty alright. I don't actually have throat cancer, for those of you guys who are worried. I, last time I made that joke, someone actually, like, DM'd me crying. Um, yeah. Thank you, Controls. I appreciate that. I feel really, really... I'm, like, really hard on myself when it comes to commentary. I felt really, really upset that I, like, stumbled over a lot of words. But you know what? All things considered, I think we all had a good time. I'm glad you all joined us. It's a fantastic evening. Once again, congratulations to Switch Fox Dash. You played phenomenally, phenomenally, and thank you for joining us this evening. I hope to see you again in the future. If Thursdays work better for you, let me know. Maybe we can accommodate you in a way or another, because I would love to have you here more often. You're quiet sometimes, but good narration otherwise. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nami Kinotora, I would love to see you play more often also as well. Maybe next time you'll be able to participate yourself. Maybe Yo-Yo will be able to join in a little bit early, because I would have loved to see some sets against Yo-Yo. Some of these players have not seen fight Yo-Yo, and that would have been some fascinating, fascinating information. Collect that data. VODs will be up very soon. Um, Sign-ups have been up for Skullgirls Gekri for a hot minute. I will see you all next time. By the way, uh, if you are one of the winners of this week, Sorry, what do you need from me again? I need your PayPal. Uh, I need you to send that to me by DM, preferably through Discord. Uh, if you don't send it to me by Discord, DM me on Twitter. I'm at Crank Machine on Twitter. At Crank Machine. Um, and if <coughs> if uh, Discord works better, and it works better for me too. Just reach out to me there. Send me your PayPal. Once we confirm that, I will send you your money. I think you've DM'd me before, uh, because I don't think this is the first tournament you've been a part of. You've won prize pool money before. I like to believe. Pretty sure. So yeah, get in touch with me. I'll try to reach out to you myself, and I'll get you your money. Have a wonderful night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. I will see you around.